everybody, it's Sophie and Marco. Dish out on the movies. But today we are going to review season four of the X-Files. Oh boy. So I just want to start out and say that season four, I think, even though I gave a few A's to some of the episodes, because I liked them for certain reasons, uh, I would get, give it a downgrade from last season. And uh, I don't know, I just felt like, I felt, I, I don't know if they did this on purpose because of, you know, what the storyline was, but I felt like there was a little bit of a disconnect between the two actors, Scully and Mulder, and I know that, and I wish I didn't know, because I don't know if it would, it affects my thinking or what, but, um, because of his problem. Sex addiction. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know, but I, I felt... There was a disconnect between them, and but that could have been because there of the was, story too. There was a connect between him and other actresses, though. That's for sure, right, Safi? Like, well, more of the last time because I, there weren't that many. I don't think he had that many opportunities with women this time because they. He did like that, that past life episode where he. Oh, that one. It well. opens up. And he walks into this battlefield, and he opens up a bunker, and he sees these people there, and they're about to drink poison, and the girl, he just stares at her with, like, this really, like, queer look, like, he's like, and everyone's looking at him like, what the fuck? And he's, you know, he's looking at her, because he's, you know, because, quote, unquote, they know each other from a past life, but in real life, you know... He's looking at her because he's interested in her, and so it's pretty hilarious. And I then gave that episode an F. And then uh, they're like, "Okay, Mulder, what should we do?" And he's he's like, "We need to interview her. That picture is telling me that we need to interview her." <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but you don't know if that's all it's because so... the way it's written. You know, that's what I'm saying. I kind of wish I didn't. I, and what am I supposed to do? We this. The, it's just the, funny. It's just something funny to point out that the seasons happened a long time ago, and since then is when this other thing happened, or we found out about it, I should say. And so, I mean, but you it's can history. tell. You can tell. You can tell that there's something not good. But yeah. Okay. So anyway. What we decided to do, there are 24 episodes, and um, we watched them all, like two a day, and we <clears throat> ranked, like, I, uh, there's 24, right? So I ranked 10, my 10 favorite, and then I just told some of the stinkers at the bottom, but I didn't rank every single episode I and we also graded them so for the most part my top 10 are all A's but then there's there might be some B's in there too you know like a B plus or whatever because it just seemed the, the season seemed a little off I, I don't know what to say sometimes it seemed a lot off and other times it just you just it didn't feel right the whole the whole time and like the last season I was like almost like a, you couldn't tear me away from watching it and this time I'm, I'm like well I want to watch it but still I just it's so you know Marco mentioned that it, a while back maybe in one of the first two seasons how things just don't ever seem to get resolved and they had that same thing in this one too but it's almost like they're resigned to it and I I don't know I can't imagine being an investigator and being resolved resigned to being to having everything cleaned up that everything isn't cleaned up and 
I just don't, I don't believe it. And so, um, you know, I just don't know. It's just, a, it's just there's a feeling of incompleteness. And also just take the way you take care of things. Some of it was hogwash. And it was, and I say that because, well, especially the last episode, I'll just say I gave it an F. And I would think that's, that's actually my, the first episode, which is a continuation of the previous season. You know, where like they left off, you know, it's like a, uh Oh, you mean that amazing season three finale build up where the whole episode felt like a trailer for season four? And then, and, and and then, then at they... the very end, you have that epic shot of the alien bounty hunter charging towards the screen. And oh. you know what? They didn't even show that. Yeah, they did. They did? Yeah, they did that stupid ass shit where he chases them around the area and then, like, uh, you know, he tells Scully, Scully, don't use a gun. It's not going to do anything to hurt oh, him. Yeah, okay. And then she picks it up and she uses her gun in, on him anyway and it doesn't do anything. And then He just knocks her over, he knocks, actually. And then, like, they have this kerfuffle and uh, it's just, oh. It wasn't, and it was disappointing. And so, you know yeah. what, I gave the first and the last episode of the season an F. Because, uh... It was bad, but it had some good elements to it like well it in terms of good elements it had them more than I liked, the last one the I last liked one was how, trash I liked yeah well I liked how the smoking man uh, brought back his mom at Mulder's mom at the end with the alien bounty hunter I thought that that was cool and that that was like one of the best moments of the episode. That yeah, it was probably or the, the only good the best, episode, or good the best moment. moment. Sorry. So can I review the season now? Yeah, Sophie? You go ahead. Okay. I've... Well, this season sucked, Safi. It just sucked. See, even Marco. This this is the worst season so far. Uh, it's it's not even close. Like I'll take season one's bad episodes over these bad episodes. I'll take season two. I'll take season three. This this season is terrible. It is just completely abysmal. It's even more embarrassing the fact that people say that this season is the best season of the show. I can't believe they like, would say that. that that's In just, terms of what? It's just outrageous. It is outrageous. Uh, Especially if that last episode. Yeah, you know, there's there's just so many things. Like the whole season, the big theme, the big problem is the disconnection between everything. Everything is disconnected, poorly structured, poorly written, poorly acted, poorly everything. Uh, you know, you have Mulder the whole season. He's just staring at girls, and he's he's like, ooh, look at her, look at her. He did this a and couple of times where he just off. He, he, he's, he's just like, staring. He, and he's, he's like, just... And you're he's like, drooling. That's what his. He's uh, drooling all over these these poor actresses on set who are like, you know, they're trying to get, uh, you know, get an acting career, and you know, he's just like, <laughs> he's know. like, I... he's hovering over them, and he's like, <laughs> you want, you want it, hey, uh, hey, female extra number four. You want to go to the cafeteria and get some snacky poo after the uh, shoot is over? Like, that's what he's like in this season. He's just a complete, like, goofball, uh, just well, that a thing flake. Where, that one where he uh, he didn't know what happened. And part of that episode was good because I they didn't actually... Like it. I, I thought it was dull and dumb. Well, it just, it was a segment of it. I thought that was good because they actually resolved it. But the rest of it was like, because he, he, it's this, what's it called? Um, I mean, he is basically, Safi, he, he is basically just, his whole character, in a sense, is nothing but a plot object. Like, his character, <laughs> what... Well, well, he, you know, he thinks of the actresses as objects, but oh, he goodness. himself is an object. And for every, like, just the whole show is built around Mulder, 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 Mulder. It's like, 
yet. Okay, I, I am kind of glad that it's not all built around Scully because she has this terrible soap opera storyline about her cancer, her little cancer poo. Uh, but Mulder, like, just everything is, is all centered around, like, Mulder, 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 Mulder. And it's like, see, this is why you shouldn't have killed off those other characters in the past three seasons uh, who you could have had as other members of an X-Files team. You know, you shouldn't have killed off Brad Dourif uh, from season one because he could have still been in the show and you could have had storylines around him. You know, but it's just all about Mulder, 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 Mulder. Like, oh shit, Mulder's memory is coming back. And there's little flashes of these uh, fucking clues. Like demons episode. Demons. That's what, I, that's what I was talking about. And I didn't like demons. That's why I like a little bit of it, part of it, because it got resolved and they arrested Sophie. the guy. But the rest of it was trash. Sophie, let's let's not forget about that past life episode. Oh. Oh. Well, oh. That was the worst. I gave that an F as well. Oh. I, said, I said I gave four Fs. In, so. in this past life episode, it is, it, it, oh, 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 it's like a, a romance novel and written for 50-year-old women. And he's mooning over, you know what I mean? He's just he, like, he's got this stare he, in his face, which Marco he, brought up, and he just, he, like, melts. You can tell. That, melts in a suit. You can tell that he took that picture home with him after the shoot was over. And then framed it up on the wall or something because he's just that weird. And they have this whole that they have that, that this episode they have an hour left to get evidence so that this disgusting evil cult leader, which the cult leader, the villain, he's hardly in the whole episode. He's in there for like a minute. Yeah, he could be an uh, abuser. He's a child he's, abuser. He's a, yeah, they talk about that. A child abuser, not just like a hitting person, but a sexual abuser. Oh, Safi. Well, that's a horrible crime, but I worked in that uh, area for a few years, and it's very relevant. <laughs> and they have an hour left, and, 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 and Mulder has the guts to say, you know what, Scully? You know what I think would be really cool? What if we... Uh, I don't know, hypnotized ourselves so that we could find out about our past lives. And that's not guaranteed like, at all. Because, like, that's kind of cool. I've studied that. I just... Uh, wouldn't you do the same that. thing, Sapi? Because that's what he no. said. He's like, wouldn't you do the same thing? No. And, he's, and, and he does this terrible, terrible... I mean... This is this this is the worst acting for both actors the whole series this season. Uh, he has his moments here. Scully has hers later, which we'll talk about. You know which episode I'm talking about with her. You the know the last one. No, oh, that's the oh. That's what I gave. No, the, I gave that enough. The other one, you know, the one where she's like, Mulder, I'm dying. <laughs> but no, in this past life episode. He has an hour where he is just sitting, and the camera is, like, zoomed in on his, his, his derpy face as he's like this. He's like, you know, he's like, his face is all scrunched up, and he's I like, I was that, oh, oh, Scully, oh, I was in a dress one time in the past, and then you were my father, and she was my brother. <laughs> That was weird. And you know, another thing, too, which I found very offensive and shocked by it is I used to work at the State Historical Society of Missouri in the photograph department. So I would, I, that's historical photographs and lithographs, and mainly photographs. And we had glass slides, all that stuff. Anyway, um, and they're all, I had to work on the filing system and people would check them out like, uh, and people would come also and get the historical photographs through our, um, campus photo, photo service. They would have them duplicated and then they would leave a copy with us forever. They would give us one and then they would take 
one home or their and their original and they lost the original of one guy but anyway they had original photographs of uh, Civil War which are extremely value on uh, valuable on the market but still they're just valuable anyway in terms of history because these were marked with the names which is if you've seen any of those uh, Civil War photographs, they're hardly ever marked, which is terrible. And they took them out of the Smithsonian or whatever photographic library they were getting the photographs from, and they took them to the girl to show her because one of them looked like her and one of them look like Mulder. And also because Mulder got a sneaking suspicion that it was a very important picture. Wink, wink. Yeah, and so these are the original historical photographs. They took them out of a museum, their collection. And then, guess what? She rips one apart. <laughs> and, she, d d down the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, vertical she, line. She tears them. She tears them in half. I, I, I almost freaked out. She tore an original Civil War photograph in half. Why? 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 Even if it, even if it was fake, I don't like that. I don't like what they. I mean. Those, they can't go down the street and get another copy. Safi, that episode Just was irritated like, me that, so much. That episode was literally X Files fan fiction. Well, like I gave you, that an F, so I, I don't did. Care. It wasn't my kind of fiction. Well, you could just imagine like fans like, ooh, wouldn't it be cool if Mulder was a soldier and Scully was his general and then the smoking man was was the bad guy? Like, ooh, that's so deep. That's oh. so, ooh, I believe in that. Ooh. Oh. Like, 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 F off with that fan fiction shit. Well, I did kind of like the idea that maybe she would but, but the the whole episode's trash cuz the episode sticks out like it completely doesn't fit with the whole season no it doesn't and her character dies so her character's gone like her character is literally she was introduced as being like this important figure in his life she, she was going to help them try to give them information and about them having guns she did a really good job acting actually <laughs> Uh, even with Mulder practically Salivating drooling over. all over her, I mean, you, you know, you you could even see like little droplets of of drool on her clothing from when he's like standing over her and going like, "What do you know?" <laughs> and but this season, that's the problem though, is the season's dis disconnection. And speaking of disconnection, because this is this is going to take a while. The in the first episode, the Mister X, which he was a pretty cool character. Like he, you know, it's nice to have a deep throat character who, you know, this guy he's younger, so he can get into combat situations, which is even cooler. Uh, he gets killed in the first episode. And he writes, like, this bloody message to Mulder and Scully. And then we never hear about that again. Yeah. Like, WTF. Like, it's just, it's like, what the fuck? Like, it it, 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 it doesn't make sense. Why it's did they like, even do it? They I don't know. It, they didn't need to do it. Because it just never showed up. And then another disconnection was Crycheck. Uh, they have this shitty two-parter. I gave both of them Fs. Uh, Crycheck comes back. All of, a C's. all of a sudden, he just comes back after he was trapped inside that uh, place with the black I guess goo on silo, him. I think. Yeah, he was trapped in there. All of a sudden, he's free. And all of a sudden, he's a good guy. But then he's not. And it's like, just what he's the fuck? He's a double fuck? agent. Like, just, just stop. Like, why is his character so special that he just comes back for these these pop-up events? It's like he's a pop-up shop. 
You know, you ever heard of those, Safi, pop-up shops? Oh, yeah, I know somebody who does that with he, their reselling. He is literally a human pop-up shop, okay? Because he just pops up, then he leaves. And it's like, why even have him at all? And then, uh, just, there's so much to talk about. And then Scully, she has her worst acting moment and and the uh, Memento Mori. Yeah. Mori, where she... You know, she's dying of cancer, and she just acts like a complete crybaby, and she becomes a total drama queen, and it is just terrible. And it's even more surprising, because, Safi, that episode was written by Vince Gilligan. Oh, I gave that a D. I gave it an F, uh, because although it had some really good... Because that the, the sad thing is that that episode was actually a, a good episode, other than her. Like, she was the worst <laughs> part of the episode. Uh, just the, the whole feeling of disconnectivity was the big issue with this season. And I think that that's something that they don't really care about, because back when you guys watched it, when it came out, <coughs> it would come out twice a year, and there was barely any break in between seasons... Whereas, you know, usually you have like a year between seasons uh, nowadays or even longer because, you know, they're so lazy. Uh, with this show, it would come out like all the time. And so maybe they didn't really care about the structure and story structure of a season. But I do. Uh, so that's a problem. You know, why is all of a sudden, Safi, don't fall asleep. I'm not, I'm just... Why all of a sudden is the smoking man given an origin episode? Like, I don't know. I, do, I don't <laughs> accept the fact that... Just why? Like He it, has it had, to go back to his home. It had no relevance. Where his mother lives. And then he wants to figure out... That's that one episode where he goes... Part of it's resolved, but the rest of... It's the, the, the demon one. And he... Uh, really? That's the Smoking Man episode? Yeah. Well, he's in there, though, as a young man. Do you see that? Uh, yeah, kind of. Now, they have... And they have a whole... Like Marco said... It didn't have any it meaning It says... It calls me. it the musings of a, of a smoking man, I guess. And uh, that was the title of the episode. And uh, he had his... And it was his, old, his origin, so you can see where he got his beliefs and then you find out about his home life and that he I think he had to be fostered out or he lived in an orphanage orphanage or something and I mean it, it, but I it's don't just remember why that, that was price out of nowhere you just have this episode that feels like an episode you'd have at the end of the series where you'd Good. finally learn about the character Safi don't yawn it's really embarrassing I can't help it uh, who cares? You have this is a review. No, no, you on, sound like a going. you sound like a zombie. Well, you ought to hear the resellers. Some of them, they don't, they yeah. Don't well, they do. suck. They're not well, they movie don't. reviewers. They suck. Well, it's they can, not unheard of for somebody to yawn. Well, Sorry. it's it's not unheard of for somebody to actually. Okay, be Marco, in, you're uh, di di uh, diverting away from the to be enthusiastic while shooting a video, Safi. I am enthusiastic. I'm, I mean, you're, you're acting like you're. 200 years older than the smoking man. Well, it's just the fact that the, the season wasn't as good as I had hoped. Well, the season fucking sucked. And that's why part of the problem. It was terrible. Because the whole motto of this season was forget about whatever you want just as long as it's convenient for the story. Like, who cares about uh, that tattoo... That, t that <laughs> I said tattoo... Uh, tattoo you know remember that really good tattoo episode where scully gets a tattoo and it's implied at the end of the episode that she's changed because of the tattoo it's affecting her character and then the next episode they just completely forget about it like what the hell it, it just it yeah like, and she got it looked like she got a fairly big one too it, it really pissed me off the stuff that they did this season it was irritating it was <coughs> it was so bad it just this feeling of disconnection 
it is not good. And the characters, they really go back and forth. You know, Skinner's character, he has this random episode where he, completely out of character, he destroys evidence for no reason. And it's, it's quote-unquote, to save Scully. But, you know, <clears throat> you'd think that by now he'd be smart enough not to do that. Like, he's he's so stupid. He's a, he's a clown. And it doesn't help that he's also the dead hooker guy. Uh, so it's just, this, this season sucks. And then you have the finale. Soppy. And the finale. <clears throat> Mulder's, Scully's like, you know what, Mulder? I think that it's all a lie. I think the whole series is a lie. Even though we've seen all this evidence, stuff has happened, it's all a lie. And, <clears throat> and, and, then, and then Mulder's like, Scully, I, you know, you're fucking retarded. And she's like, no, Mulder, you don't understand. They gave me cancer so that you would believe. <laughs> I mean, something. Yeah. That is the stupidest fucking shit I have ever heard. Like this is this is some of the worst writing I've ever seen. What kind of fucking shit is that? She got cancer so that he would believe in aliens. What in the? I just I, I just couldn't what? Believe it. What is that? And Safi's just falling asleep. Well, that uh, one, uh, I just couldn't believe it. I That was the last one. And for her, she's a medical doctor. And for her to say that, and just the <laughs> thing with her at, at the end, with her telling a panel that it, it was all a big lie in order like, to believe <laughs> in aliens. And, like, there's no such thing as an alien. There's no such thing as... Like, like Going, Mulder, uh, maybe a fl- alien crashed here. Mulder, or... remember that? Remember a few episodes ago when that plane killed like hundreds of people? I gave that one an F too. That ne- that ne- what? Yeah. You gave the plane episodes an F? Yeah, I did. God, you're retarded. Uh. I like so, the yeah. weird ones and the funny uh, ones. Yeah, well, like the suck. talking tattoo. The talking manipulative tattoo. Okay. He's jealous of this bachelor, and then Scully, Scully goes wild. Well, I, I that's lo- an implication of something. Maybe I really like that up. episode too. I I thought that that was real, but you you know you. I like the Leonard Betts one where there's a headless corpse. That one sucked. And it was in a it was a, a person who was able to regrow his body parts. It's just that was the oddest, weirdest. Strangest it's, thing. It's just all a plot contri- contrivance so that he can sense that Scully has cancer. Yeah. That's literally the only reason the episode exists. <clears throat> but anyways, Excuse me. she's like, Mulder, that plane crash that killed hundreds of people, that never happened. And like yeah. all this stuff, it never actually happened. And I'm going to believe that because I'm Scully, the stupidest character in history. And and it's just it, and and they and if that's not bad enough, if the fact that they destroyed the past four seasons isn't bad enough, they have another episode called Paper Hearts, where Mulder's like Scully, I think that this this random serial killer killed my sister, and you know there must not have been any alien involvement because, you know he said so, and it's like just. All these seasons of story completely undone in one episode where you know that the storyline is bullshit. You know, why is he believing this random serial killer who says that he killed Mueller's sister? I know, I after mean, everything we've heard, <laughs> how can that be? God, that really pissed me off. They're so retarded. The only reason why I didn't flunk it was because... It was interesting how they talked about on each dead person. He made a paper heart. Well, I, I flunked it. He made a fabric it. heart from their clothing, but I guess not. Well, I flunked it. And I, uh, but other than that, I just 
he just stood there and he allowed himself to be duped or manipulated and I did not understand that at all. We yeah. had a stab well established about his sister from the very beginning, not just for that episode or that season, but from the very beginning. That was four seasons ago. And why are we trying to destroy that? Um, <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, the, the characters suck now. Uh, so anyways, I'd like to talk about the worst and best episodes. Okay, that's a good idea. I was, and then I'll just go first with my That's worst great. ones. My worst ones, I gave out six Fs. Wow. Uh, the past life episode yeah. was, that was fan fiction. Uh, I hated that. That was horrible. I gave that an F as well. I kind of like some ideas in it, but poorly executed. Uh, and it's too bad because the actors did a good job with the multiple personality. Uh, the Toleco episode, I didn't give an F. Uh, I gave it a D, but, you know, it was literally, like, there's this black guy, and he sucks the black out of people. Like, that's literally the episode, is, like, an albino African person sucks the black out of black people. And and it was also kind of copying Squeeze, and basically making him able to squeeze into small places, like, just because... I thought that was really strange to do that, to copy themselves. Yeah. And then the uh, the two-part one about Krychek coming back. I thought that that was totally weak. And, you know, Safi, she's a, she's a, she's a biased uh, person because, uh, you know, she would have been ranting against this if it was Chucky. Because, <laughs> remember, she doesn't, we don't like it when... They just skip past what happens and then say like, uh, "Oh, this person's just suddenly okay now," and but then all of a sudden for X Files it's okay for her, because uh, Krychek comes back, no explanation whatsoever. None. The two parter is completely and he's a double agent. It's completely worthless two parter. It it's really uh, trash. The whole story like remember, there's that part where the. The TSA guy, he unpacks the black goo and he just, you know, he's like, oh, who cares if this is a biohazard material? Biohazard, uh, too. Like, just really, really embarrassing storytelling. Which is here. unbelievable. And then... A TSA agent, too. The, well, they're pretty retarded. You know, they shouldn't even exist. Uh, <laughs> Paper oh, Hearts, okay. Paper Hearts episode, obviously, I give that an F. Uh, the the chupacabra one was like a C minus. It wasn't done very well, and it just is not what a chupacabra is supposed to think rip you apart with its teeth. Memento so they, more. That was memento. I'm 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 doing mine now, Safi. You can have your chance when I'm done. Well, no, I was uh, just agreeing or with you. Well, yeah, but I'm doing mine. And you can talk about how bad it is. Okay, whatever. Memento more is another one I gave an F. It was just complete trash. The way that her character turned into a giant crybaby, <laughs> and uh, I don't I don't see. You know, a lot of people in the 90s probably had crushes on her. I just don't see how that would be possible because her character is so weak that it's like, ew, gross. Uh, you know, what a weak character, both of them. Fuck these characters, they suck. I hate them now. I don't, I don't even like the X-Files anymore because this season ruined them. It really ruined them. And then uh, the... The Demons one was a D. And then, of course, the finale, I give an F. Uh, the finale was the worst episode of the season. It was just a complete giant FU. And it was a complete undoing of the past four seasons. And I really didn't appreciate it. I hated it. I, I <laughs> you know, I, it's a good thing that I don't take it that seriously because I would be extremely upset if I was a like a, a a real hardcore fan of the show, I mean, what a pathetic excuse for a finale! Uh, it's just another trailer for the next season. Like, when are you guys gonna do a finale? 
Like, can you guys stop doing trailers for the next seasons? Like, you can do that sometimes, but can you also make finales that are, like, complete stories? Because it, it really pisses me off, just this terrible storytelling, terrible writing, terrible writing. Safi, you've done falling asleep? It's your time to do your worst. Well, mainly I agreed with Marco that one where he was a Civil War soldier and they tore up that photograph in half, which freaked me out big time since I had worried over every single photograph we had. Uh, a glass slide or could be broken. I told you my first and last episodes of the seasons, I gave them both an F. I gave the airplane one, which is called, um, oh, let's see, sorry. Yeah, and if... that Memento Mori one where she, uh, it was interesting. The only thing that I thought, felt was interesting about that episode was that she was, they were working on a case and um, uh, somebody they needed to interview was this woman. So they go to their house where there was these two women and they answered the door. Well, the one woman that she, who she wanted to talk to, she was in, I think she was in the hospital with cancer. She was sick. And they said, oh, we know you. They're talking so like, because she went by herself because Mulder was doing something else. And she said, I, I'm sorry, but I don't know you. And, and she says, we know all about you. We're the same people. And and she's going, what are you talking about? And then they all agree. They've all been abducted by aliens. Sophie, that's from season three. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Okay, well, anyway, I'll just continue on. Uh, another episode that I gave an F was uh, Tempest Fugit. That was that yeah, F you for giving military, that F. which F downed a passenger jet on purpose to hide the evidence that it collided with the UFO. And then there were two plane crashes. You know, on every plane crash, they have a team of investigators. This is now. Safi, you literally loved that episode. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. And then they have a team of investigators who come investigate the crash. Well, they figure out because, and Mulder brought this up and they laughed at him. But the head of it wasn't laughing so much when they discovered that there were some anom anomalies about the aircraft that looked like that they'd never seen before, and it was impossible for it to ever happen. So they found out there's another crash site. Guess what? That was the UFO. That's why this last episode, which is called Gethsemane or something like that, is so bizarre. Because Scully is testifying, I guess. So I don't... you're you're blaming the finale. I mean, you're blaming this great plane episode for the finale being trash, is what you're saying. No, I just thought it was asinine that they they killed. Uh, the, they're saying in the episode that the U.S. military downed its own aircraft with a plane of. United States American citizens yeah, in order to hide evidence yeah. that a UFO collided. They didn't, they didn't want to, remember? It was an accident. Yeah, but then they tried to cover it up. Yeah, they had to cover it up because it was an accident. Okay, well, they anyway. Just, they just wanted Max to get uh, abducted so that they get rid of the evidence. It had nothing to do with purposefully downing an airplane full of people. And then, okay, another episode, well, I didn't give it an F, I gave it a D. And it wasn't even the government, too. It was a private company. Yeah. Remember, it was that right. private company. Right. So why are you acting at just... I didn't like it, okay? Yeah. And then yeah. episode 21 was called Zero Sum, and Marco actually brought this up. This was about Skinner being framed for murder after he tried to cover up another death uh, slash murder of a girl who all she did was go into the bathroom to have a smoke on her break and uh, she got attacked by bees and they weren't killer bees they're regular bees but if you have enough and they and you rile them up 
they'll kill you because so they all the smallpox bees. in them. Yeah, but they all that will also kill you because of the too many bee sting venom. Uh, you, nobody can take that. So anyway, um, okay. And did you talk about the ones that you liked yet? Or no. Not? Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead. So okay, that, Marco that's will all do the one. ones that he liked, and then I'll do that, yeah. and then we'll rate the uh, review or give the uh, whole season a food review. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I really liked the Sanguinarium episode with the plastic surgery. I thought it was really gross. It was hard to watch. It was really, really gross. It was. But oh, all that blood. It was just. Stuff. It was a really good horror episode. It gross. reminded me of Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. And I really liked the villain and how he ends up getting away. And I thought that, you know, he does this thing every 10 years where he kills people to make a new identity. So. Instead of making that movie in 2006 that's about, like, aliens and shit, uh, who apparently they never existed, uh, instead of making that, they should have just made a movie that was a sequel to this episode, because they don't catch him, and it's like a really cool ending where they don't catch him, and it was actually really well done, and, you know, the actor who plays the villain, he's still alive, you know, he's he played in uh, Twin Peaks, remember? Mm, yeah. And, you know, he's just sitting around waiting for David Lynch to make Twin Peaks again. <laughs> <laughs> and he's probably going to die before that happens. I know. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Uh, I actually... Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I like the Small Potatoes episode, kind of. I just love the fact that this villain in this episode is basically the Loki of the universe because he can disguise himself as different people and so the fact that he disguises himself as Mulder is really cool and how that works out you know I thought that that was really cool uh the never again episode I really really liked with the tattoo and of course the tattoo was voiced by Jodie Foster which I thought she did a really good job as the voice and it was it was a fun little episode like it 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 was kind of like a a funny hitchcockian type of episode where you know the tattoos making him kill people and you know i like that and then uh home was a really really good one uh, obviously everyone loves that one already they think that that is the best episode of the series or one of the best ones i would agree uh it I, I don't know, for some reason, it's just such a great episode. It's just, it's such a classic in the way that they, you have this group of villains, and they're really brutal and evil, and to see them uh, go up against Mulder and Scully, especially in that last part where, you know, they set off the trap, and, you know, there are a lot of uh, Andy Griffith show uh, references in this episode that I thought were really cool. Like, with the axe trap, you know, that was directly from an Andy Griffith episode where there's a haunted house and there's this axe that is, quote-unquote, floating around, and then they find out it's on a string. Hmm. And so in this, they had this axe trap that ends up killing one of the cannibals. And the, the I mean, one of the inbreds. And the inbred family, you know, they look like... Uh, they do look like they're in. They look, they look and act like, almost like they're the Darling family. And I thought that that was cool, because I've always hated the Darlings. Uh, they're some, they're, oh, but these people hate are, the Darlings. They're so odd looking because of their anomalies and their facial structure. And, and I love the ending where two of them get away, which once again, why in the hell haven't they made a sequel to that episode? There's so many episodes that it's they like can make a sequel to. Yeah, so many episodes. And they just and, let them floating off in the wind. And then the two-part plane episode, I would also say, both of those are A pluses. Uh, Safi's on crack. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. it's a really it's a really dark two-parter. I thought that they did a really good job of bringing back Max's character and act, actually making you like him because. 
he, he was a stupid character when he was in season one. I didn't give a flying fuck about his character, but they actually made him a, a great character in this two-parter. And just the fact that, you know, Mulder is really determined to solve this case. He's determined to get the evidence that he needs to prove it. And I love just every... It's such an action-packed, great episode. And uh, especially the second part, uh, really, really uh, phenomenal uh, masterpiece episode. And speaking of masterpiece, Safi, of course, Musings of a Smoking Man is also a masterpiece. Uh, it is such a fun episode with great character development on the character who, as I said before, in seasons one and two, I just thought of him as the dumb background character who smokes. Well, in this episode, he's he's such a great character and, and you have these really fun, funny scenarios where if they were handled poorly, they wouldn't have worked at all. They would have been total joke jokes and and so I really loved that episode and I would totally watch it again. Uh, so what what are your favorites, Safi? Okay, well basically I agree with just about everything that Marco said. Uh, I don't know, did you mention the Enru? one about the photographs with the little uh, details in them that fuck were no okay well i that was my number uh nine episode i just thought that was interesting it it, it was okay it was uh seeing seeing uh things through a killer's eyes and there's details in there uh on the that would pop up in the photograph and they couldn't explain them but they were like symbols or of things that would be in the murder scene or something about the murder and I just thought that was that was different and fascinating and then I don't know if he mentioned synchrony that was no my number 1098 wait a minute yeah 108 episode and synchrony was it was okay it was about um yeah it's, it's just this bad okay. science going on in other words they're doing something that would be very harmful uh, to people and to every the world and and life in general, I guess, and um, they just keep it up. And then one of the science scientists fakes some results, and which is a big fat no no, and got away with it. And then um, so in the, the somehow the future uh, scientist of one of the present day comes back. And starts killing everybody to and destroying the research, so it can never be reproduced again. Which you know that's a joke, because if you have research like that, somebody will come along and figure it out it somewhere. Is, it is notoriously hard for yeah. scientists to reproduce their work, Sophie. Not but some other scientist somewhere. It's not impossible. And I know that it is hard, though. It is it hard. It is hard. It might be harder. And this is stuff that really needed exact. You're attacking the episode. Okay. Well, anyway, I thought it was interesting. He would come back, and at the end, he <laughs> he t held the because what would happen is he'd make him catch on fire or something. I don't know. It was weird. It was kind of like another episode we watched in another season, um, and with Jack Black. In a certain way, um, he wasn't the one who caught the people on fire. It was his buddy, and he actually died too from that. But um, in the episode, but um, anyway, he went to his younger self, and he embraced him. And by coming together like that, they both caught on fire and exploded. It was really it was basically like X Men: Days of Future Past, but crappy. Uh, it was it it was another episode where you have this feeling of disconnection because they're talking about the future is terrible uh it's it's just it's a nightmare and it's like you know they they're talking about this 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 big these big consequences these big nightmares and nightmare situations and you're thinking like they're just so casual about it that you know you can't take it seriously cuz you know it's just another episode of the week yeah that's true it's true okay um 
My number six episode was unrequited. I don't know if he talked about that one. I don't think he did. And that was about, uh, which was interesting because I don't think he could do that nowadays. For Vietnam veterans, they're they're in their 60s and uh, 70s. And, um, which, well, I won't say anything. But anyway, this was about, and I remember there was a lot of talk about this for a long time. I don't know what happened, but in real life. And what happened is this Vietnam vet got left behind. And he came back as a, as a ghost. And he started killing off all these well, they were like generals, but people in the upper echelons of the military. Sorry, and he uh, because they were responsible for leaving uh, these Vietnam Vietnam veterans behind. And you're talking about people in prison camps, or I don't I don't know. Some people back then they were talk they talked about some people chose to stay there in Vietnam. They'd made a home for themselves or something. I, I don't know. I don't remember what but came Sophie, up with how it. many episodes are there gonna be where there's a vet there's a veteran and he comes back to take revenge on the evil military leaders. Well anyway. Like they've done that a million times now. He finally he got the last one. He just kept killing, killing, they couldn't stop him, which was odd. And so then I I know we talked about Leonard Betts, but I don't know if he put it in his favorite No ones. way. <laughs> and Leonard Betts was the one where they have the headless corpse walks out of the uh, morgue and he grows another head. <laughs> and it's just so funny. It's this guy who is able to regrow uh, his body parts, but with, with a cost. Uh, he has to kill people to do it and I can't remember how how it worked in the configuration but it ends up his mother who knows all along that he's special she uh, actually dies it was and a weak episode it was poorly executed it was a good idea though uh, I like the scene where Mulder had to dig through the gross body parts <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was probably and, that, and there were a lot of things in this season that were also reminiscent of Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. There's a moment where Mulder uh, rings a bell, and which mm. is, and and that episode's written by Vince Gilligan. And then there's a uh, there's that serial killer one where his car his car is an El Camino, mm. which Breaking Bad. Uh, and then of course the killer in that episode, he does his killing in an RV. Like yeah. with the Breaking Bad, so. That's right. Okay, well, there were two more that they were like my two and my number one. And my number two was Elegy. I don't know if Marco mentioned that one. No. But that was about, we have one uh, thing we really loved to do for a million years, and because of COVID, we stopped going, and that was bowling. And it was about this guy who had a mental problem, but he was allowed to leave the place where he lived and work in this uh, place. A bowling alley and um, anyway somehow he began to see visions of these people who were had just been killed and it was mainly young women and uh, and then there was actually blood at the side of the bowling alley and so they were all thinking he did it and then they found that he didn't do it but the, 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 what I liked about it was there was a twist at the end, which seems like in these episodes they rarely have a twist. I mean, they have some kind of weird thing going on, but they don't ever really do these twists thing. And I really like that because it's a surprise, and I like surprises. So the twist, anyway, the twist is that they're not going to resolve the episode, and that's not you're, true. You're going to be unsatisfied every single episode. That's that that's the twist. True. Well, the th- the only thing is. That came out of it. The, who the actual killer was. That was the twist. And how it related to him. She was taking his medication. He's taking these heavy duty. Psychotropic drugs. Because he's schizophrenic. And he sits there and goes. No, 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 no. Yeah. And. Um, <laughs> it, it was a funny this episode. Nurse. 
And I just, that, and she actually attacked Scully in the end. But what what's discovered is that everybody, the the only, the reason why he was seeing these ghosts, because Scully saw some too, is because you have to be sick and dying because after they found out the nurse did it, they, he had disappeared and it found out he had like a heart attack or something and he, or some kind of event, you know, neurological event, I don't know, and he passed away. And so, uh, he appeared before Scully and she had already seen one of the teenage girls who had just been killed. And so now that's, she's even more upset about her condition. Okay, my last one, my favorite one, which I know Marco mentioned it, but he, I don't think he mentioned it as being his favorite. No. And that was Small Potatoes. And the reason why I liked it was, this was one where the, this man, who was just an average person, and he, he really, people didn't show much of an interest in him. I guess it's because the way he looked, and he didn't seem to be able to talk about anybody or anything interesting but me, because he never got the chance. But uh, he was able to replicate men, other men. And so all these women had gotten pregnant and he had been working there around them. And he was able to turn himself into their husbands or whatever. And so he seduced all these women. And, he, and what was, what it was hilarious for a long time was he turned into Mulder and he sat in his office and he made, <laughs> made fun of what he did. He thought yeah. it was stupid. and. <laughs> silly and then he went to see Scully he knew she was at home and he uh, came on to her and as soon as he did of course the door burst open it's the real molder and then he instantly changed back to his original form but it was hilarious and I thought that that was funny because it's really molder acting and uh, and he's acting like he does in Californication which yeah. is funny yeah, to so, see that side of them. Um, I, that was, I just, it was so different because most of the episodes are dark or they're horror or well, they're they're really weird anomalies and uh, that are you can't explain them and they're uh, they're unresolved and this one was just light and funny. You can you can that's why I liked you can it. you can have fun with home without taking it too seriously, even though it is really dark. Well, there's murders in you, it. You can have fun with More that murders. one. More murders. There's like uh, at least three. Musings of a Smoking Man. You you know, that's really enjoyable, and I'd like to watch it again. That was interesting, uh, because that was like historical. They showed yeah. a lot of historical uh, events and people mixed in with their story which i like to see too because you can see what it looks like they made the smoking man the best character in the show uh the worst character i mean it's funny because after this after this season i would i would say that only the only character i care about is the smoking man because all the other characters all the other characters though have been ruined so anyways okay, well, what's, what's your food rating I of would the whole season. Well, I would say that it's been it 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 was like Wendy's has been over the past couple of oh. months. <laughs> okay. Because you know they for a long time Wendy's has been like the best fast food place ever, uh, or one of the best, and now their quality has just gone completely downhill, and they have this promotion where they say, uh, "Hot and crispy, guaranteed." They're talking about the French fries, <laughs> and then you get them, and they're overdone, or and and they're they're cold, and they have all these defects, and so ninety percent of them you got to throw them away because they have like big black spots inside Ooh. of them, and Ooh. green spots, and gray spots, and brown spots, and uh, black moles and shit, and it's like ew, uh, nobody wants to eat that. And so their fries suck. They used to have the best fries ever. Like, they used to have the best fries. Now they don't. They suck. Uh, I don't know who has the best fries anymore. Your mom. <laughs> uh, oh, I see. Your and, dad. <laughs> okay, keep going. And, and they never get the orders right. You know, uh, yesterday, for instance, I wanted... 
10 spicy nuggets with ranch dressing and a frosty. Guess what they gave me? They gave me 20 spicy nuggets with barbecue sauce. I mean, fucking retarded. And, and, and then if that's not bad enough, they, they make these simple little mistakes that are like, really? And so all the time, they give me regular chicken nuggets instead of spicy ones. Yeah, fuck off with the time, Safi. Uh, and then they give, for the Frosty, they'll give me small Frosties, and I want a medium. Yeah. And a lot of the time, in fact, 99% of the time, the Frosties are soup. And I hate soupy Frosties. So, Wendy's has just gone completely downhill. They've destroyed their reputation that they built up for me for the past years. For like 10 plus years. I've thought their food was amazing. Uh, not anymore. So, Safi, what's yours? Well, it's funny. We, we eat out a lot. Um, and mine was a crappy pizza. And the thing is, this, this season was a mixed season. And mainly, we both agreed that it went down from before in terms of quality. And so, uh, which is how come he talked about the quality of Wendy's and how it's gone down. But the thing is, you can get a pizza, but there'll be something on the pizza that isn't right. Like it'll be one of the toppings or the sauce or the crust. One time we even got a pizza where there's no cheese on it. They completely left left the cheese off. Yeah. Accidentally, it wasn't even on purpose. So we just... Uh, we just had some pizza, and I don't know what they did to it, but it just part of it was so awful. They didn't they didn't season the crust. You know, this is Domino's, and one of the trademarks of Domino's is that they have this nice tasting uh, crust. Yeah, and so anyway, if sometimes if one of the ingredients is bad, it makes the whole pizza bad. So if the sauce is no good, I mean, I can't even eat it. I have enough trouble finding something I like to eat. Today I tried to have a bologna and cheese sandwich, and it was so gross I could, but, you know, I'm trying to save money, and there just isn't much that I like to eat. So, but, uh, but aside from that, it's diverging. Uh, mine is like an incomplete pizza. I'll just put it like that where you don't you don't get everything that you like and i would think if somebody gets a good pizza they're going to like everything about it they're going to like the way the crust is the sauce and the toppings which what else is there and the cheese i guess because that can actually make a difference too especially if you don't have it so that's my review and what are we going to do next, Marco? Our next uh, Peter Boyle movie? Yeah, we're going to be reviewing Joe tomorrow. You want to watch Joe together, Safi? Oh, God. No, <laughs> not another one. Yeah, it's called Joe. Okay, well, so goodbye, everybody. Goodbye! <laughs>